Hey guys, Will Rojay here, and I wanted to talk a little bit about a program called Reaper. I know um, a lot of people use different DAWs like Sonar, Cubase, Pro Tools, Logic, and such. Um, and I personally think that everyone should try out Reaper. It's not a free program, but it's a free download. If you just go to reaper.fm, you can download it and install it and have it running within literally about 40 seconds. Um, and I think everyone should at least give it a try because it can really make some things go way faster than you could possibly do in any of the other programs. Now, let's just um, kind of get started. Uh, you're just looking at the UI here. This is what it starts off looking like. Um, we have a mixer here in the main edit window there and so on and so forth. It actually behaves very similar to Vegas. If you're used to Vegas, you'll get right into Reaper right away because it's almost the same exact thing with one crucial detail that I'll go into later. Um, as far as putting in items, you can just drag and drop right in. Um, I'm just going to very quickly drag some stuff in here. It's you know, very simple, whatever. Um, you can also use Reaper's... Um, uh, Media Explorer, which is kind of similar to anything you would use for sound. You can just kind of put that in there. Um, Reaper is also compatible with a program called Basehead. Um, you can spot to track in Basehead and just bring to Reaper whatever clip that you want from whatever sound. Um, and it basically just works. Uh, so yeah, we're just kind of making tracks. If you want to import multiple things at a time, do that it'll give this and so yes would mean you have it vertically and all in different tracks no it would just be sequential um, the other cool thing is that uh, this media editor also has a preview so let me turn auto play back on uh, you know as soon as I click something it goes there I can click around and here I want to hear this thing so on and so forth um, so that's pretty cool you can even start it on bar that would behave a little bit more like stylus RMX where it just you know waits for the next beat um, that's obviously cool for music and stuff, uh, but that's basically how it works. Um, it's very easy to just uh, create a new track. You just kind of double click here, or you can do Control T or insert new track, whatever you want. Um, so yeah, let's talk about selection. So Reaper is different from pretty much any program I've ever used in that it does not select with the left mouse button at all. Yes, you can have a bunch of tracks let me turn autoplay off. You can have a bunch of tracks and you can like, you know, control click to get a lot of stuff or you can shift click to get a range. But left mouse dragging will not select multiple um, clips. And the reason is it does everything selection wise with the right mouse button. That's a little weird at first, admittedly, but the reason that it does that is, and then I'm just going to be facetious for a little bit, you can now do this. And yes, this is kind of, you know, absurd, but um, when you have a very complex project, that actually is very useful because if I were to, you know, accidentally left mouse click something, I didn't mean to drag it. I just meant to click it, but now I've moved it and, you know, that, that can cause problems. So it's actually a very good thing that it pretty much says, okay, the right mouse button is doing nothing but selecting tracks and bringing up context menus. Um, so that's that. Uh, otherwise, it pretty much behaves the same as Pro Tools and Sonar. Um, go anywhere, you press S to split, or you can change your hotkeys however you want. Um, uh, mouse wheel to zoom in. Um, fades, again, the same as Pro Tools, except it doesn't have a separate fades thing. It's just, it just works the way it, it does here, very simple. Right mouse click to change the kind of fade. Um, you can turn auto crossfades on or off. I think by default it's it's on, but this is the button right here. What you notice when I first split this file is that it created this little, you know, these two little tiny fades. You can actually tweak that. Um, I know that if you're doing music, then that's very useful. But if you're doing, you know, uh, looping a track or looping a sound or a lot of sample editing type stuff, you probably don't want it to do that. It's just doing that as a convenience. And there's definitely an option to get rid of that. And I'll go over the options menu later on. The left mouse button, if you click and drag that, that'll actually change the time selection. And this is for if you wanted to, for example, if you wanted to loop this section, that's what that controls. Or if you wanted to render just this bit, render is control alt R or just file render. Um, then you just do render time selection and it'll just do that. So that's what this is for. And it's very useful, obviously. Uh, if you wanted to select the entire project, you just control and double click up here. Um, or if you wanted to select just the range of this uh, media item, control double click that. 
and so on and so forth. There's also hotkeys, like if I just want at the end of that, it's uh, shift and right bracket and so on and so forth. You can also change your snapping settings. Right now I have it set up to, to snap in the same way that Vegas does by default. By the way, um, right click this uh, magnet looking thing to bring up the snap grid settings. Here it's snapping to items. Here it would snap to the grid, which is basically beats. Obviously this is useful for music, for sound design, not too much, but uh, if you're snapping to items, that can be very useful because now it'll snap to the end of something or it'll snap to the beginning of this cue, so on and so forth. Um, and the last thing I wanted to talk about was Reaper is different from every other program that I have ever used in that it doesn't actually have a different concept of a wave and a MIDI track. Every track is pretty much anything. Similarly, Reaper doesn't have a concept of buses and sends. So you have the master bus and that's literally the only quote unquote bus that is in Reaper that you can use. Instead, it allows any track to become a parent or folder track. If you click this little button here, it'll parent everything underneath it. And if you click again, well, this is parenting everything underneath that or childing, whatever. But if you click again, that'll end the chain. Um, a little faster way to do that would actually be to, if you just drag a track and you get a little bit over halfway there, you notice this little blue line went from all the way to like a little bit truncated, that'll child the track to there. You can do multiple selections and do that, so on and so forth. Um, what's cool about this is that, yes, it's a folder, so it's kind of like Sonar, but it actually is a lot more useful because all the parameters in this track, including um, effects and whatnot, they'll actually get, um, they'll actually propagate to everything underneath it within this folder. So if I were to like move this around or add some effect, this is what uh, brings up the effect, by the way, the little FX button. Um, It'll all propagate to everything in there, so you can do things that way. Sends are actually exactly the same thing. Um, if I wanted to make a send, literally it's also just a track. So I'm just gonna make this send and call it reverb or whatever. Um, this, by the way, is Reaper's reverb slash impulse response thing, which is actually pretty cool, but I'll get into that later. Um, and anyway, so Literally, what you do is you just change the input-output, this, this little I.O. You right-click that, or left-click, I guess it doesn't matter. And you just ch choose whatever track you want to be ascended. It literally lists every track in the project here. Um, you send your send amounts or uh, whatever audio channels you want to send to and stuff like that. And it'll do it. You can also do this in reverse if I wanted to. You know, it's already propagated this automatically. But I can go from the sending track back to whatever I want it to do. Um, that can be a little easier if you have like a really big project and it's hard to find stuff. But yeah, you can also add receipts from all tracks as you just saw. And you notice this is working for both audio and MIDI. What's also kind of interesting and different about Reaper is that it doesn't have this sense of soft synth as being in this separate, separate world. Um, synthesizers are just effects. And so if you want to have a MIDI track play through a synthesizer, literally all you're doing is creating a send. The synthesizer is now a send and you're sending MIDI data to that track. Sounds a little weird, but if I were to click here, this this is how it would normally look. You would send all of your MIDI all channels to whatever channel on the synthesizer that you want, and then you would choose your synthesizer here. Again, we'll go over this later because it's a little bit more complex and I just wanted to go over the basics here. But um, yeah, that's basically how Reaper works in a nutshell. I'll go into more detail about specific actions that you can do and other stuff like that. Um, maybe even a little sound design. But um, basically, Reaper is very fast, very responsive. Everything kind of moves extremely quickly. And um, you know, you can have all kinds of complex operations. I'll go, my next chapter will be on preferences. And I'll show you how you can literally make Reaper act and behave exactly how you want it to, however you're used to in your old program, but with tweaks to make Reaper a little bit faster.